What up and welcome. This is something unique and different. This is for Soul Seeker, which is a podcast blog, and I have some videos on YouTube as well, but it's mostly about podcasts. Um, I have over 30 uh, Soul Seeker podcast episodes live and recorded within a matter of months, and every single one has been in person. And right now, I want to share the message more than ever before because of the coronavirus and what's going on with our global community. So for that reason, I am exploring possibly doing some podcasts or other soul seeker content um, remote and in interviews. So here's the first uh, formal or formal informal interview with a homie of mine. His name is Josh Robbins. He runs a badge business in the promotional products industry. He's a supplier. I'm a distributor. So anyways, we have that relationship and he's awesome. And you know, this guy, um, I've known him for a few years now and he lives in Tennessee, which is obviously a more conservative state. And he's been very vocal about being anti-Trump and uh, sticking up for what he believes in and the right thing, morals and values. And what I wanted to talk with him about is what the overall sense is like in the South, in Tennessee, where he lives, because you know, that is more of a conservative area and pro-Trump. And what Josh talks about is like the people around there calling what's going on Kung flu, the Chinese virus, which is all like kind of part of the Trump thing, which is not good, right? Like it's separating us. This is a time when we need to come together. So these are my beliefs. These are his beliefs. I also talk with Josh about some of the positive things that are coming out of his community. So this is just a very informal chat about what's going on. You know, I saw Josh put a Facebook post about how this has been like a roller coaster of a week emotionally and everything like that. And I was like, buddy, let's I would love to have you on the pod and just uh, talk a little bit. So this is uh, just kind of experimenting. Like I said, usually I do Soul Seeker in person and it's more about someone's uh, spiritual journey and their mindfulness. A lot of times plant medicine, ayahuasca, but this time I want to talk about the coronavirus and just what it's like in different parts of the country because I am out here in California, more liberal area in Santa Cruz, bunch of hippies. But anyways, um, appreciate Josh coming on and uh, this is uh, something that I edited on my own. You guys probably know if you follow my content, I have a team of virtual assistants that support me in producing content and I don't know anything about video editing so I'm just messing around so that it won't be the best and that's because I did it, not my VAs. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy and thank you for the time. Thank you for taking the time to check this out. Appreciate it. I have a weird excitement with all of this that like this is going to be the transformation. Like a lot of spiritual people say like, there's a great awakening and that's why there's so many people on earth right now because like the souls want to experience that. Like they've been saying that for the past couple of years. So for me, I'm kind of looking at this, like, yes, there's all the devastation and it's, it's terrible. Like it, whether it be people ill, dying, losing your business, uh, financial, all that type of shit. Yeah. Having said that, I'm hopeful that this is kind of like we've been building the cocoon and now we're in the cocoon and then we'll come out on the other side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, you, you already see, I mean, we all know like in times of tragedy, you know, you see the, all the good that kind of comes out of it. I mean, of course there's total, you know, wickedness and total crazy, but you can see so much good, especially when you're talking about a population you know, mm -hmm. and just as a people, you see people just get better. And so um, I think I, you already see a lot of that, you know, people getting back to roots and, and family and friends and helping your neighbor and all that kind of stuff that you see normally in, you know, in, in tragic situations. So, yeah, you, I mean, you, you may be right. I, I don't know that I was thinking about it on a spiritual level like you. I was just thinking more like uh, human beings not sucking so much. Dude, it's the same thing. That's it is, I mean, yeah. 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 It's the same thing. Like, yeah, I mean, some of us like think about it a little bit deeper, but that general 
philosophy and concept of a human being mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> not like right now we're human beings we're not human doings because we've been human doings you know now we have a chance to breathe and just be and be human beings mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yep yep yeah so anyways it's definitely interesting times is there any examples you can think of that kind of stood out with you where you saw a glimmer of hope? Yeah, I mean, you, you see hope everywhere. I mean, I think the, the hard thing is that whenever something like this happens, you know, and especially as like a business owner and a father and a brother and a son, and you, you process everything um, personally, you know, and so you're constantly caught up in um, what do I need to do business wise to keep this afloat? What do I need to do for my family to keep this afloat? And I think you sort of shut yourself off a little bit to actually seeing what is actually going on around you. What are other people doing? You know, I think it's real easy to just kind of put yourself and back yourself into a closet sometimes. And you don't even realize you're doing it. You're just, you think you're doing the right thing, but you're, um, you're sort of walling yourself off a little bit, you know? So every now and then it's good to just kind of breathe and just look around and see, okay, what, you know, what good is coming from this? And like I was talking about, you know, I mean, I see uh, even just, you know, scrolling through Facebook and you see stuff and you see these families who are like taking time with each other. They're playing board games. They're going hiking. They're going fishing. And it's like, shit, man, we should have been doing this the whole time. Like, why does it take something so crazy to like really bring us back in? You know, and I mean, it's not like we don't know that we need these things. And it's not like we, you know, we don't know that our soul needs this. It's like, I mean, any time that you go outside, I mean, you can feel it immediately when you're in nature. But it's like we allow ourselves to just be consumed with this, um, you know, this grind and this work. And we feel like it's the right thing. But is it really? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, I think just slowing down and seeing people sort of get back to, um, you know, just get back to themselves and, and their families and what's it actually important is always good to see, you know? And you know, it's like, I went and knocked on my neighbor's door um, when I got home just to check in on them. They're both retired. And um, you know, I just asked, you know, how are you doing grocery wise? Do you need anything? You know, I know you guys don't want to get out. I've got to run to the store tomorrow anyway. Let me know if you need something. I wouldn't have done that shit two weeks ago. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I, even though I know that I should, and I love Bob and Lisa, I mean, they're, they're great, but I wouldn't have made it a point to go over there. And, you know, and then, and I got back and, and of course they're like, no, 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 we're good. We're good. We're good. Um, but when I got back, I was like, you know, why don't I do that with my neighbors when it's not times like these, you know, it's just, it, it, it just kind of makes you think, I mean, it kind of hurts your heart a little bit sometimes, you know, you could be a little too, um, a little, a little too hard on yourself sometimes, but um, you know, I think stuff like that and seeing stuff like that, is, is only going to increase over the, you know, over the next couple of weeks. And it's good to see, you know, maybe that'll get us back to center a little bit. Right. Yeah. I'm hoping so too. So I have a question for you since you are in Tennessee and in certain pockets of Tennessee, there can be a lot of racism and a lot of um, yeah, just uh conservative and you yeah. are very vocal in your, your political stance against Trump and yeah. uh, you're out there for the mayor Pete uh, rallies in Tennessee and whatnot, which was Pete. awesome. <laughs> that must've been a scene. So my question for you is like, have you also been seeing the reverse where people are being like, I mean, Trump is calling this the Chinese virus. Yeah. Like, Dude, I, a bit, man, funny story. I almost got in a fight today. Um, I, and I'm not a fighter, but <clears throat> the drive through line. But you can uh, throw down if you need to. Oh, I will throw down on certain things. I mean, it has to be pretty serious, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, the, uh, the drive through line that I was in today, the, uh, I noticed like there was a, a, a tussle or, or something going on in the car ahead of me. And, uh, and I noticed the guy starts yelling. And so I rolled down my window. It was raining, so I had my window up. But I rolled down my window to, just so I could hear what's going on. And the guy is yelling at this lady that's in, uh, that's in a Zaxby's and saying, I don't want that chink uh, touching my food. And I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? This is in just like in broad daylight, just to her face. And uh, so I start laying on my horn. And, and uh, I can't get out of my car because of where it's at. So I'm kind of, you know, 
through my window and I'm yelling at the guy. I'm like, dude, if you don't get out of here, I am, I'm going to come up there and physically remove you myself. And I got up to the window and the girl, of course, was crying and the manager was, you know, all upset and the guy is long gone by that time. But, you know, it's just, it's like, um, words matter, man, you know, and you can't just, um, you can't try to make that normal. You can't call this a Chinese virus. You can't call it Kung flu. I mean, like, I mean, it's funny, like to a certain extent, but that's, I mean, those things matter. And I think like people, especially here, man, um, they hear this and they feel vindicated in their racist and bigoted feelings and they just let it flow. And I mean, we have to fight that. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's physically or whether it's verbally or whatever it is, we can't let that go. You know, I mean, that's got to be priority number one is making sure that they understand that, you know, look, these may be crazy times. And yeah, we may have a whack leader, but you're not going to talk like that, you know, Uh, at least not where I can hear it. So, yeah, I mean, it was crazy, dude. It was surreal. So it's funny that you brought that up because, I mean, it was I knew it was going on and, and yeah, this state is so crazy. And, you know, I mean, you're you see Confederate flags everywhere and uh, you know, it's just kind of a way of life here, I think. And some people just learn to accept it. But that was the first time that I actually saw this current crisis, um, the, the, the racist nature of it come out. It was, I mean, it was bizarre. I, I, I couldn't even believe what I was hearing, you know? Right. It was yeah, bonkers. No, it's, it's terrible. So with that in mind, I mean, do you think that, this could be big enough for those type of people, the racist, the <laughs> type people to um, change their ways, open their heart. No, really? Okay. Um, I what mean, do you th- I, I, I guess maybe. Um, it, well, what's I, in- yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say with nine 11, like the way it impacted our country, right? We all came together and at Grand, I was young. In 9-11, I was in seventh or eighth grade. And, and so I saw it a little bit different. You were probably what, like college age or end of high school? Yeah, I was 20. I, I was in my early 20s, yeah. Because I, yeah. I was headed in my way to work, yeah. But I feel like, you know, no, I feel like I know that we all came together and mm-hmm. – I mean, that was different because it was like a terrorist. It was a terrorist attack on our country right now. I can see the blame game of uh, why I don't agree with it, but I can see how Trump and his followers would say that in blame China. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And I could see how his followers would jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm long-winded, but just saying that maybe that's why they, um, they won't change their ways with this one. That's how it's different than 9-11. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that very many people change their ways 9-11. Um, and I, I don't think that Trump um, created racism, you know? Well, um, yeah, right. I, I just think that he allows it to kind of come out. And, and, I don't think he allows it. I think he he is invoking it. And well, yes, right, yeah, yeah. The opposite of allow, like he's like bringing, like, hey, come out promoting of the it. Now, yeah, yeah, you can be vocal of it. Like they even say that he gives out signals to his following at the speeches. I forget what it was. Like the okay means something or yeah, I yeah. I mean, you you start to get into some conspiracy stuff when you start. You know, it, yeah. I, I I I just think he's a bigot out in the open. I mean, he's for sure, just, he, he's he's a racist. I don't think he, there's any secret signs or anything. Um, I do think that you know these people were racist anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, before any of this started they just feel like they are allowed to show it in the open which in a weird screwed up way might actually be better you know it's like because you start to see people's true character sometimes um Mm. and you know they were hiding you know and this was in the shadows of their hearts um and now it's just being brought out and you're like oh okay so that's who you really are you know thanks for showing the world you know so sometimes it's best to get that hate just out in the open so that we can confront it, you know? Right. Uh, so maybe that's a good thing that comes out of it. I don't know. Um, but it's, it's disheartening, man. It's really disheartening when you see it. 
You're fighting the good fight in an area that is uh, tough to have that mindset and opinion and outlook, I guess I should say, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I'm fighting a fight or anything. but Oh, you yeah. are. I mean, we all see it today. Social. I almost did. <laughs> Not physically, but even on social. I mean, you've been active uh, with your political posts on social for a few years that I've noticed. Um, and we've yeah. only been connected for a few years. So, right. But my, my point is, like, you're very vocal about your political stance and your morals and your ethics and your values. So I, I would say you are – doing your part way more than I am for sure. You know what I'm saying? Well, you may not see it the way that I see it, you know, uh, like in your community, the, the way that it's so apparent here. And, um, but that's I, my point. It, yeah. It really takes a lot of courage and bravery for you to step up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so much easier for you to be like, I don't want to cause stir this up or anything, you know? Sure. I, you know, I'll say this, there's, it's never the wrong time to say the right thing, you know, or, or to, or to do the right thing. So I, I don't know that it's courage, man. It's just, it's just common decency. And, right. you know, a lot of politics I'll let aside because yeah, you shouldn't post politics on, on social media. I mean, whose mind will you ever change? You know, I mean, I've had some good debates and, and I've, you know, talked to people and we've had good conversations. Um, but they tell you don't do it because it's bad for your business or people won't do business with you or, you know, uh, it's, it's just a bad look. But sometimes when things cross from political to moral and ethical, you have to speak out. You, you can't be silent. Um, and even if you feel like maybe it's not making a difference, you don't necessarily know who's seeing that uh, or who that affected that day. And you may never know. Um, but it's never the wrong time to say the right thing. Like you just speak up, you know? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You know, that's gold right there. All right. So let's uh, get on some positive stuff. So yeah, well, yeah. are you, first of all, are you guys on lockdown in Tennessee? <laughs> no, man, this state, okay. is, it's like the opposite of lockdown right now. Um, okay. I mean, I, I will say it, obviously people are staying home. Um, the, the, highways are a lot clearer and it is slower. You can't go into a restaurant. You got to go through a drive through which still probably isn't wise right now. Um, but you know, like grocery stores, um, all of our sporting stores, uh, people are in line to buy guns. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, every time I drive by our local market, it's just, it's packed. Um, and there's still, you know, traffic out and about. And let's talk about the gun thing real quick um, yeah. before we get to the positive stuff. Uh, but, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how are guns going to help with what's going on right now? I mean, that's the same as toilet paper, right? Like how is well, toilet paper going to help you? Uh, to me, it's the same category of uh, stupidity, idiocracy. Yeah. I mean, it, I agree with you. I, I'm not a gun guy. I'm, I'm, I'm anti-guns. I don't own a gun. Uh, but having said that, I would be a liar if I told you that I'm sort of feeling a little foolish for not owning a, a firearm. Um, it, not that I think that, you know, this is going to be like a zombie apocalypse or anything, but um, you, you never know what other people are going to do, you know? And, and I feel sort of like um, as a, as a father uh, protecting my household, what am I going to do if somebody does try to break in and, steal food or steal our toilet paper or whatever, whatever crazy thing they're after right now. You know, I mean, I've got a baseball bat, yeah, but I mean, but that's different. I am making an assumption and you can tell me your opinion, but my assumption is that people are buying guns uh, to go on the offense, not what you're talking about, which is defense. Um, you know? I, I, yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what's driving everybody else, I, but I know what's driving me would be defense. But yeah, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. If it's like, you know, no, I'm going to buy all the AR-15s I can because the government is going to come in here and I'm going to show them what's up. It's like, dude, you don't have an F-16. So came over, man. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, so I, I totally understand that. And there is a lot of that it, for sure. I mean, there's people with armories in their basement and they've been loading up on ammo because they think it's in times and they're going to be some sort of uh, resistance or whatever. Um, but I think there are a good fair amount of people who are just simply protecting their families, you know, and mm -hmm. 
don't start nothing won't be nothing kind of attitudes um so i hope that's what it is that makes um, sense i get that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay cool now let's move on so i was going to ask you what type of stuff you're doing to uh keep busy and fill your time are is your business still open right now yeah yeah we're still open um it's actually been really busy man um this this week i mean we sell you know but uh we, we sell name badges and signs and, and plates um but uh I didn't know what to expect because we have a lot of uh, business in the healthcare sector um, and, and, and a couple other sectors that I thought might still be steady. Um, of course, a lot did drop off. We do a lot with hospitality. It's gone. Events is gone. Um, you know, we do a ton of like restaurants and fast food. Uh, it's all gone. Um, but the healthcare markets have, you know, really picked up. So healthcare is big, um, grocery stores and grocery chains and food service in general is just through the roof. Uh, delivery, um, delivery services is crazy. Uh, we just processed like, uh, you know, a, a thousand piece order for, um, uh, uh, in-home teachers. Uh, it's like a, a tutor system, I guess, and they're branching out and now they're bringing teachers into homes. Um, so you see it pick up in a lot of different places. So we're picking up slack. It, I, we, we're still losing business from where we were, but it's still kind of keeping us afloat. Um, so I'm t what I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm in a unique position where um, we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of these badge programs. So we get to see like what markets are actually hiring, uh, you know, what markets mm -hmm. aren't, what badges are moving. So from like an employment standpoint, you're really on the front lines because you get to see those numbers and we can pull reports and see what's working. So I'm working on putting up a new, uh, we're building a new website. Uh, we're going to do a couple uh, podcasts and we're going to do, uh, a couple of email blasts and we're just going to tr try to get the word out and say, Hey, look, I know nobody wants to go out and sell right now. Um, you know, it, it seems a little tone deaf, I think to like knock on doors and try to push product on people. Um, I think that ours is a little more commodity than it is promotional. So I think, you know, people actually want this and they need it. They're not, you know, it's not like they're being talked into why they need this, you know, gel hand sanitizer clip on kind of thing. Um, well, now we know why we need the hand sanitizer, right? <laughs> no, no doubt. Yeah. 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 So, uh, it, so it's been busy, but I'm just trying to get the word out as to what it is that's keeping us busy. Um, and that way maybe we can Smart. Sp spread the love, you know, and, and let people go. I also think, um, you know, this is going to get worse. I think there's going to be a lot of military intervention and a lot of tents, um, a lot of, uh, medical fields, um, uh, being set up. And so, you know, temporary signage and all the stuff that these things need real fast as they're getting thrown up, um, mm. I think is going to go through the roof. So I think just prepping not to take advantage of, you know, it's like, I, I, you don't, I guess it's a fine line. It's, you don't want to take advantage of the situation. Oh, what can I sell when they pop up a tent? But at the right. same time, if they need something and they, and they have to buy it somewhere, then we need to be the ones that provide it you know, and right, how do right. we do that? So that's, that's kind of where my mind has been all week and, and fleshing out new items. Um, you know, just stuff that we think might work. Well, I agree with you. And especially with the content marketing and not selling right now, like the things I'm telling my network to do is now, cause at least where I'm at in California, we're on lockdown. We have been all week and yeah. they just announced the whole state is now on lockdown as of yesterday. Yeah. That was Thursday. So anyways, I've been telling a lot of my network that's feeling it across the nation that's on lockdown at least at that now's a good time to do some op stuff, get that foundation fixed, yeah, yeah. you know, like, oh, yeah. It, yeah. So obviously the virtual assistant stuff, that's, it's a good time to look at your operations and get your SOPs in order and just get organized. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we right. have a ton of that. I mean, that was on Monday, that was part of our, you know, big powwow was, okay, you know, there is not going to be any excuses come two months or three months or however long this takes, there are no more excuses for why we don't have our new website running. Uh, why right. do we not have new product images of everything? Why do we not have a video for every single product we have? Why do we not have all of these things that we've been talking about for years, but have never had the time to do we're on it. And so it was so funny just like walking through the shop this week. And even though orders were down like number wise, 
it, everybody was just busy and they're typing and they're got spreadsheets going on and everybody is in their own project, you know, cause we just kind of uh, shelved it all out. And, and uh, it's really cool to kind of see uh, everybody sort of jump in. And so if you're not using this time to right. build that foundation in two or three months, man, shame on you because we all know what we need to do. We just haven't been doing it. So, right. So that's the other part. Like the, my first thing is like the foundation. And the second part is what you're talking about, the podcast and the email blast and, mm. and your new website, like, and the videos, the train, uh, showing the product in action and whatnot. Like that's the other yeah. part. It's like, we don't, it might be tone deaf, which it is to sell right now, but it's totally acceptable and be very wise if you were to start doing some new content marketing so that you would have this bank that you can put the pedal to the metal when things get to new normal. Right. And not yeah, just, right. Yeah. Yeah. That and positioning right now is like, I had a pivot with, you know, my whole messaging with clone yourself is like work less and make more so you can play more. No one's fucking, uh, uh, excuse my French YouTube if this is going on YouTube. I don't even know where this is going, but you know what I'm saying? Like no one's, no one's concerned about working less right now. Right now people want to open up new doors. So now my content's kind of shifting to how I can teach you how to open up doors with content marketing. And that's exactly what you're talking about doing. So yeah, I think it's yeah. super wise to get in content marketing right now for sure. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, um, it, you have to do it right. But yeah, absolutely. And that's content marketing too, is like, like enemy number one, um, as far as, Oh, I don't have time to do it. You know, it's like everybody thinks that they need to do this content marketing. They don't quite know how and they're, and they blame it on, well, we don't have time. Well, you have time now. So yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I think in three months, there's going to be so much shitty content out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be like, Oh my God, just stop with the videos. Like, what are you doing? You know, it, but, it already uh, is. You go on Instagram. I know, yeah. Everyone is doing an Instagram live right now. Like literally. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. You know, I think one thing that people are not, um, I'm sure they're thinking about it, but they're not talking about it, you know, is there's a lot of people being laid off right now. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of quality people being laid off right now. And I'm looking at it as, you know, this may be an opportunity to really flesh out an all-star team. You know, I mean, if you can find the right people um, and bring them in when everybody else is kind of dropping them off, get them up to speed. I mean, it takes capital to do that a little bit, you know, and in times where everybody's laying off and cutting hours and cutting pay, it seems sort of counterproductive to actually expand your workforce. Um, but if there's a candidate or two candidates or three candidates that you just know are just would are going to kill it for you, why not build that team? You know, why not put that together? So that's something that we've, uh, you know, really been talking about and thinking about and, and just, you know, trying to see if that makes sense, you know, because I think there's going to be tons of very qualified, really good hustlers that are going to be out there in the next couple of months that are just, you know, let go. Probably sooner than that, even. Yeah. You know, there's plenty right now, too. So you're right on the money with that. So good yeah. thoughts there. Cool, Josh. So, yeah, when you guys get on lockdown, because that is coming. Oh, I it's coming. Imagine, yeah. yeah. Do you have any plans uh, personally? No, I don't. Um, I mean, I'm never one to. Uh, not be able to find something to do in my spare time. I've got tons of work that I need to do around here that the wife will love. Um, but uh, I, I think that I'm of the mindset. I only have one place where I shut it down uh, and I just allow my mind to just go. And that's the beach. That's the mm. only place that I ever, you know, that, that I can truly just shut it off. Um, if we vacation any other spot, it seems like even when I look like I'm enjoying myself, I'm still running numbers. I'm still thinking about business. I'm still, I, I, I don't really stop, you know? So I know that if I stay home, it's, it's, it's going to be some of that. It's like, okay, how can I get that printer here in my garage and still pump some stuff out? You know, it's like, you know, can, and so I'm always, you know, kind of, it's hard to turn the grind off, I guess. Um, and the only place that I can do that is, is the beach or, or, you know, somewhere in nature. So I imagine I will force myself to like, just go for, you know, 
a, a few days or a week or whatever, get to the Smoky Mountains. It's like a two and a half hour drive from here or get to the beach if you want, you know, um, assuming they're open. Um, you know, s- s- something like that where I can just truly kind of be, be at peace and, and nice. uh, kind of reel it in a little bit. But other than that, my mind will be going crazy and I'll be trying to make badges for my garage. Well, I invite you to try <laughs> meditating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I laugh, but I mean, I, I, I could use that, you know, uh, yeah. just to learn how to stop. <laughs> right. Oh man, my mind does it too. And I've been on a weed mint kick this past week because uh, usually I stay off uh, the the marijuana. I'm not a huge fan of it uh, these yeah. days, but every now and then I'll I'll like it and it gives me like ideas and downloads, but. I've been just doing like one a night and then waking up with a high hangover and it's hard to keep going. But because I, I don't go to sleep when I get high, I get so many ideas and my, it's so many downloads and I can't stop the brain. It's just like going. So uh, that's kind of what I do. What that's I'm, hilarious. I mean, that's, that, that's actually a, a, a good effect for you, man. I mean, congratulations, I guess. <laughs> well, I still get lazy and eat a lot too. So, I mean, it doesn't really work out great. Like sometimes I'll look at the notes I, uh, I wrote and be like, what was I thinking? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, but, um, no, that's good stuff. And, um, what I was going to say with the mind and meditation and things like that, it's like when these thoughts come up and you close your eyes, and it's funny because you, you'll have a thought and then once you start to do it, you go, okay, that's a thought. You let that thought go. And then there's a new thought that comes in. And most of the time for people like you and I, they're not so much thoughts. They're more ideas like what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And it's the thoughts that are easy to let go. It's the ideas that are hard to let go because we're like, wait, no, that's a good idea. I don't yeah. want to forget it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, someone told me recently that I'll just finish real quick. Someone told me recently that if it's like an idea that you were meant to have, it will come back. And the other ones like just have faith in that. So it's helped me. I, I totally agree with that too. Yeah. I mean, and, and I do have those, um, activities that I do. I mean, I'm, I, I, I like being outside and in the yard and whether it's uh, mowing or planting or gardening or whatever it is. And that's kind of, you know, my serene time, or sometimes I'll go fishing. Um, and so, you know, those times, yeah, you get all kinds of ideas and inspiration, and it, it kind of fills you back up. Um, and sometimes, though, it's, um, it can be a detriment, because I have so many of these ideas that I want to launch. And it's like, no, you have to focus on one, get one off the ground, before you start working on something else. So, uh, and I keep a list of things that I actually want to do. And I find that if it keeps coming back to me, like you said, um, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you just have that fire, you know, and you're like, okay, I have to do something about this. You know, it, it may not be perfect whenever I do it, but damn it, I've got to take action on it somehow. So right. yeah, that, that's how you know that you've got something that, you know, even if it, even if it doesn't succeed to the world, it's still, um, benefited your soul to get it off the ground or, or to, to move with it. Exactly. Yeah. No. Good stuff, man. I like it. Cool. Well, I think this is probably a good time. Uh, to let this conversation be continued for another time and check in on Absolutely. you. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Good. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I was just going to say, it's, it's good to see you. I'm glad everything is going, uh, going all right over there or as all right as it can be for, uh, the crazy times that we're in. So,